Hello, welcome to Awesome Bros. This week, selling across the border. 100% worth it or a risky failure for future breweries? For an open window on a crappy world Max and Chris from Ups and Brew Ups and Brew That one was quite a hook and I hope you guys are ready for this kind of like political spruced up video. The reason why is because we recently got approached by Vox Populi, a brewery that I deeply love. I've been a fan of what they've been doing. Their Pilsner, the size and Pils has been one of my favorites over the last two years here in Quebec. But also, if you remember this fantastic series with their IPAs that they were going through a voting system to get the new ops in there. So you had a new feature up every single month. That was fantastic. So Vox Populi, fantastic. But why am I jumping into the subject of selling across borders is that they will eventually, not eventually, but next month, launching their new beer into LCBOs in Ontario. Being a Quebec brewery, yes, it's a challenge. But we want to discuss that because it's always something that we do have to face here in, in Quebec and Ontario, being Ops and Bros, the HQ in Gatineau, like we're five minutes away from the border to Ontario. Of course, for us, it's not a challenge to go out there, buy some beers, bring it back. Same thing for people in Ontario to kind of like move back and forth in there. But for viewers that are not in the region, I want to explain what's kind of going on between Ontario and Quebec in the market of beer. So obviously, if you didn't know, in Quebec, it's pretty much a free market. So you can easily get a license for a small shop like a dépanneur, a beer shop, or a grocery store to sell beer. We also have the SAQ, which sells wine outside of the grocery stores. There's beer over there, but it's not the biggest beer selection and it's kind of like bond to them. It's government owned and yeah, we don't go shop beer there often. Even though they do kind of like special releases online with Cantillon and whatever, but it's always cramped up and the website is always crashing. So Quebec, a free market, there's plenty of stores, every brewery can deliver to them without any kind of like boundaries, except the fact that they can't sell outside of Quebec. In Ontario, completely different. You have LCBO and you have beer stores, both of them selling beer. Recently, uh, you have groceries getting some licenses to sell beer, which is fantastic. If you've heard about uh, Beer at Browns, there's a great article by Nathan Does Beer. I'm gonna put the link down there in the description talking about what were the challenges at first because they were one of the first grocery stores in Ontario to sell craft beer. So for a brewery in Ontario, if you wanna get into LCBOs, you gotta go through plenty of paperwork to get a beer approved to have a SKU and then after that sell them to the LCBOs. But at first you're limited to a range where your brewery is located. So local LCBOs around you and then you gotta push through paperwork, through paperwork, through paperwork to finally get yourself to Toronto or outside of your own area if you're in Ottawa let's say. Ontario has some sort of a limited market looking at options to sell beer outside of their own breweries. So why a brewery from Quebec would like to sell in Ontario and a brewery from Ontario would like to sell in Quebec? Obviously, they're both very good beer markets and the only reason is that there's a little, little border and this makes it such a challenging time for smaller breweries that it's kind of like pretty much impossible for small breweries to do it. Obviously, the option of going with collabs like Buck Canada with Dominion City having their beer in Ontario and breweries like Sada City collaborating with Alafu makes it that they can sell their kind of like own beer in Quebec is an option. But having big breweries like Bose in the market and Bench, who's Max working for, uh, helps pushing kind of like the envelope. Collective Arts is also selling in Quebec and just that kind of like broke a little bit of the barrier, but also you need those pioneers first before uh, you get a pathway for the others to come in. And seeing breweries from Quebec starting getting in Ontario at the same time is very exciting for this market that's just craving for new beer. So obviously when I reached out to Vox Populi to talk about the challenges, they explained that 
being a beer brewed in Quebec, they had to go through LCBOs, pretty much a lot of paperwork and having to go through all that between a timeline that's kind of like very tight because you have a double IPA, the double fruit punch IPA, which is fantastic. Going to LCBOs, it needs to be fresh. It needs to be stored cold and all that cram into a challenge of paperwork. I, I, I can't stress that enough. It's gonna be an amazing way to kind of like push the envelope, but also maybe make it easier in the future for other breweries that want to get into this market. So obviously, now that you know a little bit more about the situation in Quebec and Ontario and about the border, Max, what are the challenges for a brewery that's jumping both feet in to this new market, crossing borders and trying to reach out to new customers? Thanks, Chris. There's many challenges when it comes to trying to get a, a brewery to get a product from one province to the other. Now, uh, as you've mentioned, I am in the process of doing that for a brewery in Ontario entering the market in Quebec. Now, one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't necessarily think of, well, they do, they just, you don't really know the immense work that goes behind it. It's just the admin, just going through the legislations, the laws, trying to figure out how do you get this one product in this other pro province? And then once that's done, it doesn't really stop because uh, the norms of, say, just recycling the cans, norms of the acceptance of sleeve versus not, the norms of the bottles, the norms of the uh, the way the, the can or the, the product has to be written changes from province to province. So looking at Quebec, everything has to have French. It has to be in French first. Therefore, the packaging has to be different. Now, not only that, but the uh, depending on the bottles, there's a different recycling program. In Ontario, we have the beer store taking care of it. In Quebec, there's another organization taking care of it with different uh, demands as to your product. And a big one that I wasn't really aware of before is the sleeves, the plastic sleeves. So Recyc Quebec is, is one of the biggest organization uh, to uh, kind of promote recycling within different uh, organizations, within different industries industries in Quebec and the big thing is plastic around uh, metal cans which is not acceptable so you got to find ways around this now you're still going to see it to this day uh, in, in, for different breweries but pretty soon it's not going to be accepted they're constantly trying to change those things now once you, you've you've gone through this whole process you've gone to uh, all the laws all the different legislations all the different norms you have to follow once you've done all that getting your product from your province to the other province is an issue as well. There's always an organization that has to be kind of the middleman. So if you're going into Quebec, it's the SAQ. Now the SAQ doesn't take care of selling the beer at all. They, for some reason, just want to analyze the beer, make sure it's okay, uh, make sure that you follow all those norms and then send it off, but they don't sell it in their establishments. They don't control it in any way. So there's some weird stuff happening that way. I mean, LCBO in Ontario does a very, very similar thing, although not a lot of products from outside the province have made it to Ontario. Uh, until now, I mean, we're gonna talk about this a little later, but it, it is not something you often see. Uh, you've seen a few breweries go on the Quebec side, and it's always been a headache. It's always been kind of a challenge just to get through. But once you're through, once you've done everything, once you've joined all those norms, and once you have a product that, it's, that is physically delivered to your client, the biggest challenge you have is to sell it is to convince the general population from that province that your product is good and it's worth it. Uh, and now I say this with all the love that I can, but craft breweries uh, were kind of made, or at least were kind of popularized by your neighborhood. Your neighborhood is where you sell your beer. You're always gonna have your biggest clientele within a very small kilometer radius. So as soon as you exit that, a lot of challenges start to form. Uh, now, not only when you're trying to go into another province, uh, province, I keep on saying province for some reason, I've taken this like three times. Uh, so not only when you're trying to go to another province, but when you're trying to go outside of your hometown, you gotta convince whoever else is around there that your product is good, that your product is worth trying, and that the branding you've chosen that's probably close to your uh, your hometown is also really cool and you should be hyped for it. And when you're going to another province, those 
troubles don't go away. You have to still create the um, the buzz around your brewery, and that's that's a big challenge. That's what I think a lot of breweries that are trying to go far from their home cities have to deal with, have to find ways around, have to yeah convince people that the quality of the product is worth. Uh, not necessarily understanding it at first, but as soon as you do, it becomes really, really cool. So as I hinted at earlier, Vox Populi is gonna officially be in Ontario, which is kind of cool, it was news to me. Chris sent me the message with, uh, usually we do kind of a breakdown of how the episode is gonna go so we can, we can film our parts you know, here and there, uh, and they still kind of mesh together. And he's like, oh, we're going to do this thing about interprovincial sales. And I'm like, well, what does that have to do with Vox Papri? I thought we were doing a, a review on that beer, and more specifically on the Double Fruit Punch, which is an awesome IPA, definitely worth it if you're in Quebec and pretty soon if you're in Ontario. So they're actually entering the Ontario market, which to my knowledge has not happened often, if at all, that a Quebec brewery was going to get into Ontario, at least not for a small craft brewery. Now that beer is exceptional. It's a great IPA. I'd say they had a shtick a few years ago where people could vote on the new hop to add to not this one, but I think it was their session uh, IPA, which I thought was really phenomenal. It's an awesome concept to be able to uh, get the public excited about your beer by having them vote on the hop that's gonna be used in it. And especially when IPAs, uh, IPAs are all about the hops. So in this case, very cool social media shtick that uh, I hope to see again, I hope to see more of. But anyways, yeah, so the, this product, this new IPA on the uh, in the LCBO shelves, it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait, uh, great beer, and, and it definitely is going to up the game when it comes to IPAs in Ontario. So the Double Fruit Punch from Vox Populi, it's been a classic since uh, probably two years ago when they got at all their Vox IPAs coming out and running in and it's coming back. It's coming back in much stronger and better packaging, I guess, because they're now uh, closely related or they're partially owned by a Schlag. It's a much bigger factory. They were already working with them and now they're part of this family, which means that they have access to bigger equipment, better knowledge, and also a huge distribution system. That's why, yes, in Ontario, you'll start seeing those fantastic little cans. It's a nice double IPA. It's boosted with nice juicy notes. Also, yes, 100 IBUs, you get that nice bitterness kick in the finish. So of course, the sugary tones that you get from the beer being a little bit more higher in ABV is cut down by, by that sharpness you get at the same time. Obviously, if you find this in your LCBOs, it's coming out in March, keep an eye on it because I think it's worth supporting breweries that are trying to get across the border and also kind of like stirring up the market at the same time, making breweries make different moves, create new beers to go into LCBOs. And obviously there's a demand for those style of beers in the market. Well, I hope you like the video. We've uh, gotten a little more technical. I mean, it's not the kind of, you know, it's not a one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a, a conversational video. Uh, it's very technical on my side and very technical business-wise. It's like looking on the other side of the curtain, how things function in the back. Uh, but I hope it was interesting. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you guys in the next one.